Hello, my name is Mary Andrus. I am the program director of the art therapy program here at Lewis and Clark. You can see here is a picture of the back of the graduate campus. The campus is situated on 137 acres of forest. There are three campuses, the law campus on the lower level, the undergraduate campus, which has views of Mount Hood, and the graduate campus, which is on the upper level. Um, today we're going to talk about what you need to do to apply to become an art therapist in Oregon and uh, have a path to becoming a licensed art therapist. The art therapy program used to be at Merrillhurst and this past summer we moved it here to Lewis and Clark where we are very well supported and uh, excited to be able to continue our strong program which has a history of 30 years in Oregon with a wide variety of supports um, now integrated into this um, amazing school at Lewis and Clark. So quickly, just wanna uh, make you aware of our program offering rigorous art therapies, art therapy training to students to become qualified mental health practitioners and ethical leaders who advocate for social justice and provide service and clinically focused care to individuals, groups, and families. The social justice piece is at our core and central to who we are and how we view art therapy in making competent leaders who can be change agents to advocate for people to have access to care and uh, be able to meet their, their, um, their needs. So our overarching program goals is to work with our students to continuously deepen this self-understanding through the personal growth experiences. The reflective art making is at our core and looking at the impact of a prejudice, oppression, discrimination, and privilege on access to mental health care. Um, our, our students are really learning how to develop responsive practices to impact social change. And students are also learning about the therapeutic benefits of a variety of art processes and media strategies and interventions to help support the developmental stages of where the person is at and help them to self actualize and work through whatever it is that they are seeking art therapy for. So the coursework is rooted again in those principles of social justice, equity and access. Um, we have small classes, so students really get this um, strong support from not only their cohort, from other cohorts, but also from the faculty. They really get to know the students on a deep and personal level. They'll be getting a lot of valuable feedback on how they're developing their skills. Our faculty are practicing art therapists, counselors, psychologists, researchers, and supervisors as well. The 30 years of supervisors we've had in this community have really been a, a solid foundation for this program to have um, a lot of support from alumni who have moved out into the community and taken jobs and then become supervisors. We have practicum and internship opportunities within Lewis and Clark's Community Counseling Center, which is a wired facility with video um, to be able to observe students working with clients in real time and supervision on site with the closed circuit TV to be able to look at sessions and provide that valuable feedback. Not only that, we have students that are placed in a variety of different placements all over the Portland metro area, elementary schools, hospitals, drug treatment facilities, working with a wide range of people from uh, women who've been sexually exploited, domestic violence survivors, um, juvenile justice, um, pediatric oncology, older adults in residential treatment homes or um, inpatient psychiatric settings. So it really varies from um, the wide range of what we have available as well. The Lewis and Clark Graduate School has a professional mental health counseling program and a uh, marriage and family counseling program, which has been a mainstay here in Portland. And they have a wide range of uh, sites where students can do their placements. Our program is 54 semester hours, eight semesters. It's a master's of art. The program start is in fall. The first year, you're doing a little bit of volunteer work, two hours a week. The second year, you're doing four hours a week with clients in a site for nine months. Of those four hours, two hours, you're doing client contact of leading groups, engaging people in the creative process of making art. 
And the final year of the program, you're doing 24 hours a week, 12 of which are focused on um, client contact, and you're serving as a part of the treatment team. The electives are pretty robust in what we're able to offer here. We have them ranging from what you can see here. We also have trauma treatment and art therapy. We have an elective in addictions and art therapy. We have electives on neurobiology and ADHD and uh, depression. We have um, ethics in movies. We have a wide range of different electives that students can choose from. The sample course sequence looks a little bit like this. Um, so students will get that foundational work in the very first year of the program, uh, learning about diversity, social equity, and cross-cultural counseling in that very first term, which is at its core, a foundational course that they carry over throughout their thinking in all of the classes in the program. They learn about ethics in the second term, psychopathology, understanding the DSM and different psychiatric disorders, learning how to build relationships with clients in the helping relationship class, learning about different developmental stages of drawing with child and adolescent development, research methods. And then moving into the second year, they learn about group dynamics, how to provide clinical assessment and adult development as well in the second year they have to meet a proficiency by uh, putting together a portfolio of a very comprehensive um, overview of all the things that they've learned to that point um, doing a comprehensive assessment on a client and um, doing an oral presentation of that client and a written uh, demonstration of their clinical skills and if they pass that then they're able to confirm their final um, placement in the program at their internship and move into the final year of their training. The prerequisites are pretty set in stone. There's not a lot of bending we can do on this. They need to show proficiency in drawing, painting, and sculpture. This includes figure drawing and we recommend that you take a ceramics class because you're likely going to be using clay with clients and you need to show that you have the ability to work with clay. Psychology, we have this expectation per the ATCB, our Therapy Credentials Board, that students have already taken general psychology, abnormal psychology, human development, and you can choose either theories of personality or research methods, and you can also substitute a statistics class in place of those two last classes. Human service experiences. These are at a minimum 300 hours and they need to show that you are working with people that are not like yourself. You're getting some experience working with children or with older adults or um, you are in some way helping with them out with a marginalized population. This could be paid or unpaid. Um, it doesn't have to um, be something you did the, within the last six months, but you can show so, some commitment to wanting to help others and work with other people. If you had a desk job as an office manager or an administrative assistant, that does not count as human service experience. Some of the benefits of practicing here in Oregon is that we have a law that protects both the practice and the title art therapist, the practice of art therapy, and we, our, our uh, faculty, helped write and pass this bill last year, and um, it will go into effect this coming year, and um, essentially this will protect who is allowed to say that they're an art therapist, and only those who have the right credential can actually practice, which is pretty amazing because there's very few states that have this level of protection. Um, so there are two levels. There's a licensed art therapist and the licensed credentialed art therapist. We're currently looking to work towards getting insurance reimbursement for those who have the licensed credentialed art therapist level of the, um, the license. So employment, the majority of our students are employed within the first year of graduating. Um, last year we had four students that were given jobs before they even finished their first, um, their, their internship. Um, and so they, they go from a wide range of places and many of them um, are able to show their employer or the potential placement that they are valued and what they have to offer is is really good and um, from there they're able to navigate and, and find employment. I think because there's such a need of mental health services in Oregon we're situated in a good place to be able to enter the profession of art therapy. 
So we do have open studio sessions the for, uh, uh, once a month in um, each month from November, December, January, February, March, et cetera. Um, these are a place where you can come and make art to get to know yourself and deepen an understanding of yourself. It's open to the public. It's free. We encourage potential students to come and um, participate in this. This is on our website. So if you're ready to apply, here's some information. Um, you only have to take the Miller Analogies or the GRE if your GPA is below 3.0. Make sure you've taken all the art and psychology course prerequisites. If you need a tip about your essay, really think about why are you choosing to become an art therapist? What is it that you understand about yourself and why we should see you as a strong candidate and what you can, can uh, contribute to the world to make it a better place in regards to social justice? Does your artwork show depth and connection to you understanding yourself and your visual imagery? And does it have any kind of commitment to social justice and understanding the complexity of um, difference and identity? Um, in regards to your home and service hours, you have to show that you've completed those 300 minimum. And um, you're gonna need two recommendation letters. We encourage you to get one from a faculty member that's familiar with your work and one from a supervisor who can talk about your ability to work with people. Here's some information about who you should contact if you have questions. And we very much look forward to seeing your application. Thank you.